So now I am so pleased to invite to the stage co-presidents of the class of 2019, Alex Q and Dominique Guang, to introduce the student speaker, Alex and Dominique. Thank you, President Johnson. Hello, class of 2019. What an honor to stand up here today and speak to you all. We've made it to the big day. That's an incredible achievement at this uniquely challenging place. Wellesley demands an extraordinary amount of growth. Wellesley breaks you down, but it builds you back up stronger. <laughs> and so here we are, ready to bring that new strength to what comes next. We are deeply thankful to have been able to take this journey with all of you. Every one of you has taken a different path to get here. Some of you spent four years at Wellesley, some less, some more. Some traveled less than 30 miles to get here. Others traveled over 3,000. Some of you spend countless late nights thesising and clap. Some of you spend countless late nights partying in the pub. Many of you did both. And now, at the end of the day, here we all sit together. It reminds us how grateful we are to have been able to share this with you. It has been our honor to serve you on class council for the past four years. Through thick and thin, you've turned what could have been just a responsibility into a wonderful, fulfilling experience. So thank you all for that. And now for our last act as class council. If there's one person in the class of 2019 who understands the Wellesley experience in every dimension, it's our class speaker. She's an anthropology and cinema and media studies double major. She's worked for the Wellesley Center of Women and has served as an RA in Schaefer Hall. You may have seen her working away in the Schaefer basement on her thesis or presenting her photographs at Together Alone, the senior art exhibition. <laughs> this student is described by her major advisor as a rare combination of otherworldly intelligence, immense social grace, and unbridled creativity. She is a sophisticated writer and thinker with wisdom beyond her years, and her thesis reflects the work of a true intellectual and humanitarian. Kavi fills any space she's in with joy and positivity. She fights for what she believes in, and best of all, she works passionately to transform the communities around her for the better. We're so pleased to present our 2019 student commencement speaker, Kavindia Thanakun. I feel like it's the Oscars, even though it isn't. <laughs> to the members of the Board of Trustees, President Paula Johnson, distinguished speaker Professor Anita Hill, faculty, staff, family, and the graduating class of 2019. <laughs> the strongest, most inspiring woman that I have ever met in my life, my mother, isn't here today. She was excited to make her first trip out of the country to see the first person in her family graduate. 
but unfortunately, her visa to enter the United States was denied. This speech is a tribute to women like my mother, who moved oceans so that we can sail on smoother seas. Thank you. In my little island home of Sri Lanka, we have a time-honored tradition where during auspicious moments like coming of age, the new initiate is often given seven gifts, each gift bearing sacred significance that is thought to provide one with peace, purpose, and clarity as they transition from the old to the new. So on this 141st rite of passage the Severance Green has witnessed, I thought it was apt to give all of you seven gifts each. Seven gifts that I have carefully picked over these past four wonderful years at Wellesley. My first gift is the gift of the freshness of those first times. I remember coming to Wellesley in September 2015, two red luggage bags in tow, 8,578 miles away from home, alone, wide-eyed, homesick, but insanely excited to live my best American dream. <laughs> what I remember from that day was the dining hall in Lulu. <laughs> there were four different types of pizza, um, five different types of ice cream, six different types of cereal, and an un unlimited supply of Coca-Cola. <laughs> for someone for whom three meals per day was sometimes a luxury, that was magic. <laughs> I still go to Lulu sometimes and try to remind myself of that sheer feeling of fascination. And I hope that as you venture forth into the world beyond, you keep the freshness of those precious first times real and alive in your heart. My second gift is a permission to be vulnerable. During our time here, some of us lost family, parted ways with old friends, broke up with high school boyfriends for other more accomplished women. <laughs> we lost, we cried, and we wished it would be the last. More often, we were asked to just move on. But Wellesley taught us that we never move on from failure or grief. We simply move forward with it. This is the gift to talk authentically and boldly about our failures and to celebrate everything from the internships that never got back to you to the Tinder matches that never swipe right <laughs> and everything between that is yet to come. Celebrate it all and move forward with it. My third gift to you is the permission to forget your GPA. <laughs> and just throw it off into the murky depths of Lake Warburton, just like we did with that penny when we moved into our first year dorms. We spent close to 1,364-ish days pulling out our hairs, wondering if we might ever graduate summa cum laude, whatever the rest of that is called. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, nobody really cares. <laughs> for the rest of you who will be applying for your PhDs and MFAs and MBAs, too bad for you. But <laughs> for the rest of us, you can finally make peace with that Wellesley professor across the aisle who made us go all the way to MIT just to bump up our GPAs. <laughs> my fourth gift is for my first generation siblings in the audience today. We played on an uneven playing field. We applied for internships when we didn't even know what a referral meant. 
We listened to our peers discuss citation styles with their parents when we were too busy discussing the best way to send money home so that our parents can pay their rent. We did not even understand the concept of office hours because for many of us, asking for help was most often not an option. My gift to you is the courage to unapologetically take up space and to audaciously own it because we made it. We really did. My fifth gift to you is a realization that even though many of us came here with the hope that we will someday save the world, somewhere between Jewett and the Science Center, Wellesley taught us that many of us would not end up saving the world. <laughs> but we would end up doing something way more humble and pragmatic, and that is to radically transform the communities that we come from. From the rural classrooms in Minnesota and Indonesia to the elections that we will run from, from the parliament in Sri Lanka to the US Congress right here, from the communities that we will mobilize as we fight for the rights of our trans siblings across the world. To the voices that we raise as we fight for freedom in Palestine. We will transform communities big and small. And I hope this gift reminds you to always, always speak truth to power, to make space for the difficult conversations, to always ask the uncomfortable questions, and to not only speak loudly, but to listen boldly. Just like the pearl necklace that reminds one of home, my sixth gift to you is of Lake Warbin. When you're in a lonely bus stop in New York or New Delhi with a broken heart and a cold cup of coffee, or when you were mansplained for the 26th time <laughs> and the glass ceiling seems stronger than ever before, I hope that you will close your eyes and think of Lake Warbin at 5.30 p.m. on a beautiful day in April. Remember how every time its gentle waves get turned back by the fringes of Wellesley, it just keeps coming back. Every day, every night, to kiss it goodbye. And I hope that reminds you that there is a home for you here among us, no matter how rough and vicious the seas will get. My last gift to you is a story and a request. In 2015, I was an ordinary girl with ideas larger than myself, working three jobs, living in a four by four room, trying to make ends meet. College was just a nice, fancy, distant dream. An incredible mentor who I had the chance to work for sat me down one day and told me, Kavi, a college degree would really change things for you and I think Wellesley would be the perfect fit. My response obviously was, what is Wellesley? <laughs> Followed by a cursory Google search where the cost of attendance made me immediately regret the three minutes I had even spent thinking. To cut a long story short, a tribe of incredible Wellesley women banded together to make this moment possible. I sat in my first year triple in Schaefer that night and called my mentor, overwhelmed with disbelief and gratitude. And I asked her, how could I ever repay you back? Antonia Demio, class of 89, who's right there in the audience today. <laughs> told me these words. She said, one day you will meet someone just like you with dreams larger than themselves, but without the means to make them a reality. Make worldly possible for them and pass this forward. 
And that is my final ask from you. Let's try to make Wolsey possible for someone else. As Anita Hill did in 1991, and as Nora Ephron reminded us right here in 1996, let's go out there and make some trouble. <laughs> Congratulations to the class of 2019.